My name is Brian Hayes. I'm a consultant with Rotiv, and we help small businesses automate their processes. So I want to talk about record types because they're a useful feature, but they're a little bit tricky if you want to use them in an automation that you've built with Flow. Now, one reason why you might want to have a record type is so that you can segment an object and use it for multiple purposes. I've got an example here where I've got a record type for business accounts and a record type for government accounts. But you might do this on an opportunity as well, maybe new business versus a renewal. Or maybe you've got multiple businesses operating out of a singular sales force and you have different record types so each business has the layouts that they need. Regardless of the reason behind the record types, you probably want your automation to be segmented as well. So you want some flows to run, let's say on the business account record type, and you want different flows to run on the government account business type. Now the area where people get confused is when they think about a record type, it's natural to think that it would be a field. I'm looking at an account, let's say Rose Apothecary, and it says record type equals business account. That feels like that's just a field value, but it's actually not. It's looking up to the record type object itself. So it's really acting like a related record. The value that's in that Rose Apothecary field is not business account. It's actually the ID of the business account record type. And this is where it gets tricky when it comes to flows. So for example, if I want to run a flow on the account object, but I only want it to run for the business account record type, I can add a condition here and I can pull up the record type field, but it's, it's a record type ID field. And I don't have any way to navigate to that related record type to pull in the name. I have to get the ID of that record type. That as I'm sure you know, it's a bad practice to use IDs within Salesforce Flow. Most IDs are gonna change when you move an automation from a sandbox into production or to a different development org. So you typically do not wanna be copying and pasting your ID values into your automation. So the question is, well, how do we prevent this automation from running on all accounts? How do we get it to just run on those business accounts? And so there's two different ways that we can do that. The first one is to actually create a formula field. We can create a formula field on the account that looks up to the related record type to pull in the name of that record type. And that way we can simply write in business account for the label or business underscore account if we're using the API name for that particular record type. So that's one option. The other option is to use a get within your flow to get that record type and then we can look at that name and we can see if that name matches what we want for this automation. And then we can have it end you know, gracefully uh, through a decision element. So let me show you how to create that formula field. And then we'll come back here and I'll show you the second option of using a get step to get the record type. Let's go to a Salesforce object manager for the account. And then under fields and relationships, you can create a new field here. This will be a formula field. Click next we'll call this record type name. The output of this field should be text. And then in the advanced formula area, click insert, and we can navigate to our related record type. If you come down to account record type here, or it'd be opportunity record type or contact record type, whichever object you're on, you can see that we can actually pull in the name right here. And you can also pull in the record types API name or developer name which is a little bit safer because the labels might change more frequently than those API names. So I'm gonna choose the record type name here. You can see this developer name on the right-hand side. That's telling me it's that API name and hit insert. That's it, check syntax. It should be green. I'm gonna hit next here, next again. And you don't have to add this to the page layout. Uh, I'm going to, in this case, just to show you what populates in there. Uh, but it's certainly not necessary to still be available for you within the flow. If I navigate to an account here and look at the details area, we've got this new field record type name. So Jake's Woodshop, that account in our system is a business account, business underscore account. And I could also change this, let's say it's a government account. And we'll see that that formula field is automatically going to update for us since we changed that record type. There it is, government account. And now that we've got that formula field, we can come back to our flow builder here. And when building this flow, we have a new field available as a condition. That's our formula field for record type name. And then I can write in here business underscore account because I only want this to run on business accounts. 
I'd only recommend creating this formula field if you're envisioning creating a lot of different automations that are record type dependent. If you only have one automation that's running, I think creating a whole new field is a bit overkill. Generally, it's good to limit the fields that you're creating within the system to keep that data model a little bit simpler and only create the fields you really need. So let me show you the other way. The other way we could do this is not have a condition based on record type at all. So the automation starts and then we'll get the record type and decide what to do with the automation. This is a lot less efficient because the flow is running on every single record and then it's ending um, after there's a get step. So if you only have one flow and it doesn't run all the time, you know, this is a perfectly fine solution. Just know it's not quite as efficient as having that formula field that would prevent the flow from even running to start with. So the second way that we can do this is to add a decision element within our flow as if we had gotten the record type. So the record type is a related record. So we could add a get step here to get my record type by ID. Then we could look at the name of that record type and split off to the right or the left. And that's what you'd want to do in a screen flow as an example. But in our record triggered flow, we already have the record in our flow as a variable. And we could actually use that to navigate to get to the record type name. So we don't even need a get step here in this particular case. So instead of getting the record type here, what I'm going to add is a decision. I'm going to call this uh, record type name. And we have our outcomes here. And so for my new outcome under resource, I could navigate to the global variable for the account. And then we can scroll over to the record type lookup right here, navigate to that. And then here's my developer name. So if my developer name equals business account, and that's business underscore account, because this is that API name, I want to go down this path. So I'll call this business account. Then we'll do it again for government account. And I'll write in government underscore account. And I'm going to leave the default outcome as the default outcome. Click done. Now we have these three different paths. So we could certainly have different automation down the different paths. Or if we just want this to end, we can add some end steps in here as well so that it ends gracefully. Either one of these methods should work just fine when you're trying to use a record type within an automation. The important thing is just to avoid using those hard-coded IDs whenever you can in a Salesforce flow. So you can either use that formula field on the record itself to pull in that API name, or you can use a decision element within a record triggered flow. Or if it's a screen flow where we don't have that global variable for the record, you would have a get step right before this decision element where we're getting that record type and then we're making a decision based on that record type name just after it. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.